So moving on to the arms and shoulders, if I take the bicep bone and I rotate it, um, the blending could be smoothed out up along the top here, uh, which I'll do in a moment, but I, I can actually see the armpit kind of caves in a little bit. I'm not really crazy about that, so I'm going to use a bit of a small brush here, and I'm just going to take the smoothing. Uh, I have it back up at 100%. Um, just so you know, the smoothing opacity uh, works as an additive kind of a blend. So you notice if I smooth this area here, look at the color change, it's not that great. But if I increase the opacity and I smooth, you can see it doesn't do quite as much. So even if you use a higher strength opacity, you'll get a faster, a faster blend. So for the shoulder area and the armpit area, I'm just going to kind of blend this in a little bit. I just hit, I released Alt a little too early there. All right, I'll pull that down and see how that looks. Something like that. Also, when you lower the arm of a character, it's not just a single bone doing the movement, you're moving the entire shoulder and then the arm. So this hasn't been blended yet, but the movement actually looks looks pretty good. Or the blending looks pretty good, I should say. So I'll start blending in the shoulder here. I'll use a small brush, blending at 50% opacity. And in the area of the clavicle, uh, the clavicle is a, a very rigid object. It's uh, very visible on this character, so we don't want it to, to deform. But just underneath the clavicle, uh, the skin will stretch a little bit. So I'll just put a blend on that, maybe take the brush up a little bit. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, that looks pretty good there. You even get the nice stretching in the skin of the character. And I have that extra bone there for just pulling at that extra extra little bit. Uh, I'll need to do a little bit of blending right here. Uh, I've got quite a tightly packed group of vertices. So this should blend together pretty well. area needs some work. Uh, I'll return the character to the bind pose to, to fix this. So I'll just take what I've done so far and mirror it across to the other side. Um, grab everything to about here and mirror that across. And I can do a little bit of work in the throat area where the clavicle meets the muscle lines of the throat. So a little bit of smoothing there could help. And I'll allow the muscles in his neck here to blend together a little better. blend a little stronger through the back. And I'll just take some strokes right across the symmetry point of the character. And once again just mirror across. Just middle click on the animate button to repeat last command. So if we have a look at the workings now. Our shoulder pulls pretty high without caving in the neck at all. There's a little bit of smoothing that needs to be done here. Just get in there, scalpel, and just blend it together. That 
be a little too strong of a blend, so I'll take the opacity on the blend down a little bit and see if I can't build it up a little bit. There we go. Keeps the, uh, the blending just a little tighter. can't pull that shoulder up. And one of the goals usually of any kind of a, a pose test or a blend test is to get the character to lift his arms above his head. And if you can do that without any strange deformations, you can usually consider yourself successful. And I think that is pretty successful. So I'll go back to my rest pose and done with the neck area. So because I froze the last operator, I'll just uh, grab everything from here. And just mask it off. Just make sure I'm not getting too deep into the, uh, into the arms. The neck I'm a little bit too high, so I'm just going to hold down Control shift and left click to deselect and maybe still allow for a little bit of editing up here. Okay, go into the weight editor and lock those weights. So let's move on.